I'm going to show you how I set up my fishing kayak, the Lifetime Teton. If you have a different fishing kayak, I'm pretty sure this setup is going to work for you as well. But before that happens, I need to take everything in this cart and put it on this kayak. Just like that. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to share with you three or four things that I want to do this kayak that I haven't done yet. Modding out a kayak is never really complete, just like a boat. There's always something you can add, there's always something you can improve, and that's going to be the case with this today. So stick around for that, I'll show you what I'm going to do to make this even better than it is right now. From a glance, it doesn't look too fancy, probably because it's not, but there is a method to the madness for each and every little thing on here. And when it comes to rigging out a kayak, the little things matter. Little adjustments here and there make a big difference to your fishing experience. All right, so in the back, what we have here is we've got this floating minnow bucket. I know a lot of people aren't gonna use that, but I do keep this on here, just attached with this little thing here. The reason why I have this is because I do like to use minnows quite a bit. And when you're in a boat like this, having minnows in a floater bucket is really convenient. And I actually attach it down here. So let me give you an example of what I mean about this floater bucket. You're gonna clip the floater bucket onto this ring right here while it's in the water. Now you have to imagine it's floating in the water like it's supposed to. Then while you're sitting in the seat, you pull this rope, it's gonna move this floater bucket closer to your seat as you pull it. So now it's more located in the center and while you're sitting on the seat, that floater bucket's gonna be floating next to you. You can grab your minnows and then when you're done doing that, you send the floater bucket back so it's out of your way. Let's look at the crate for a second. Now this crate is a standard crate you're gonna get at Walmart or Target or anywhere basically. And what I have in here are my fishing tackle trays. I've got a little ice fishing battery down here that I connect my locator to with these alligator clips. And it seems to be about the perfect size where this battery, this 12 volt battery, and these trays can fit. And that actually keeps my battery from sliding around. It keeps it in one spot, which is a great idea. Instead of taking these bungee straps and going all the way over the kayak crate, what I did instead is I put the bungee straps in the middle, then I connected it with this carabiner. You can never have enough carabiners. You can never have enough rope. Underneath that, what I keep in there actually is this tool. What this does, this is just a typical Milwaukee tool. I keep that there because when I need to adjust this on my locator, sometimes my hands are really wet when I'm fishing and I don't actually have the strength to get a good grip on here. So I use that tool to untighten this in case I wanna slide this whole mechanism off the rail system, which we'll get to in just a little bit. One thing about the Teton Angler that a lot of people don't like, and I've seen this on different reviews as well, is they don't like the position of these rod holders. I'm not sure what it is. Some people say they paddle and they bump into their fishing rods as they're paddling. I haven't had that experience at all. As a matter of fact, I love the way that these are set up in here. For me personally, it seems like I'm in the minority for believing that, but they work very well in this position. This seat is really great as far as budget kayak fishing goes. Most kayaks at this price point don't have great seats, but this one happens to have a good seat. But I made this even better and I'll show you why. Let me lift it up once and show you exactly what I mean. There is a lot of strategy that went into this. First of all, I put this two by four right here. I believe it's 23 and a half inches from there down to here. What that does is it gives me a lot better back support. You wouldn't think it would, but what it does is it keeps you up a little bit, keeps your butt away from the bottom of this kayak here. Before I did that, my lower back was sore all the time after just a couple hours of fishing. Also under here, you're gonna notice that I've got my anchor and plenty of rope attached to my kayak anchor trolley. On the other side, I've got a towel to dry my hands off. And instead of using scupper plugs, I use these little yellow foam practice golf balls. I keep these plugged underneath my seat because I don't want water coming up in that area. There are scupper plugs underneath this crate. I don't worry about that back there as much as I do down here because I don't want to get wet. Another benefit for this two x four being here, it lifts up your seat obviously, but it makes it so much easier to store things under here. You gain another three or four inches underneath your seat by putting this back there. So when I'm sitting up here, I can reach in and grab my anchor and I don't have a problem getting it out. It's a lot easier than before I put that two by four in. Same thing on the other side where I like to keep my towel. If I need to grab this quickly, I certainly can simply because I've got a lot more room underneath my seat than before where my seat was down here, now it's up here. My anchor trolley is along this entire thing. If I want to anchor from the front, I slide it up there. If I want to put my anchor in the back, I certainly just slide it back there. Super simple to use. Now let's get to this thing right here. I've got the Garmin Striker 4. It doesn't matter what locator you have, it's going to work as long as you've got a small one. That's my recommendation for this kayak. I put it on here with a universal screen mount that attaches to a Scotty universal transducer mount 
down here. I recently did a video on just the transducer mount. You can check that out if you want. I'll put that down in the link of the description. But the idea here is to keep this on the track because I want it mobile. I might want it on that side. I may want it on this side or I might want to take it off quickly and just put it back in this crate and maybe not use it for a while. It's good that it's on here. It's in a great location. From this seat, I can easily reach it. I'm about 5'11", not super tall, not super short. I can easily reach the screen. I can easily reach this down here if I want to fold this up. Sometimes you might need to fold that up to get this out of the way. I decided to keep my screen and the transducer on one side of the kayak, mainly for convenience of these cords right here. I took the transducer cord and the screen cord, the power cord that's gonna go back to the battery. I zip tied these cords together using five small zip ties. Once I lift up the seat, you'll see what I did with the bunch cord. This is a long transducer cord. I just used a gear tie to keep that organized right underneath my seat. It's out of the way. It never causes any problems. Now for this fish finder, like I said before, I have these underneath my seat, these cords here. It's gonna travel kind of crisscross and come out this way. The alligator clips go through one of these holes here. And obviously you put the red on red over here. Then you put this one on there. And then you're set to go for fishing. Also on this side of the kayak, you'll notice that I have my kayak paddle over here. That just simply goes on with this bungee cord, keeps it that way. That's another reason why that fish locator is not over here. I do plan on putting something here in the future. We'll talk about that later in the video. In the middle of the kayak, this is one of the most important things, yet one of the most underrated things that I see, or don't see, I should say. I don't see a lot of people using a dry storage that's accessible from their kayak seat. What I mean by that is, I've got this here. I keep my phone, keep my car keys, and that's there. If my kayak tips, this isn't going anywhere. I have it connected with this s beaner right here. It's right in the middle. If I need to contact somebody, my phone is right there. My keys are right there. If I reel in a fish quickly, I need easy access to a pliers like this that's going to get the hook out. This is a medium-sized pliers that works well for panfish all the way up to game fish. This is my fishing backpack slash cooler. Now, if you don't have one of these, that's totally fine. Any backpack will do, but I like this because it's waterproof and it acts as a cooler. So if I do want to keep a cold drink in here or bring some food along or keep my worms in there, whatever you need to keep cool, you can do it inside this backpack. I've got lots of useful things in there. For example, I've got fingernail clippers for cutting line and this zipper right here. I've got a larger pliers in case I need to really yank a hook out. I've got a pocket knife, a fish scale, a method for measuring the fish length. I keep my sunglasses on these bungees inside here. I've got my tackle tray that I'm gonna use most likely for that day. I know I said I have a lot of tackle trays back here, which I obviously do. But before I go out fishing, I could take most of my tackle and condense it down to one tray that I think I'm gonna use most of the time that day because this is a lot easier to access than these trays back there. I also keep my soft plastics in here. I've got a fly swatter. If you need to keep anything else you can think of, bug spray for example, it goes in this bag and it's very convenient being right there in front of you. Also up here, I've got my life jacket and underneath these bungee cords, I have a kayak leash. Now this is really important. I know people talk about having kayak paddle leash. That's also important, but this is really important as well. This rope is probably 10 feet long, I would say. I've got a carabiner on here. I have a slip knot up here on this handle. You may ask, why do I have that? Well, there's a couple reasons. Reason number one is that I may want to park my kayak on shore. Maybe I go to an island and I want to fish on the island. I want that to be secure. So I'm going to tie off the kayak to a tree or something on that island or on the shore or on the bank. Reason number two is because sometimes I clip that to my belt and I'm actually pulling my kayak up a river if it's really shallow. It's a lot easier walking through that water than paddling and you don't want to lose your kayak so I put a leash on there that clips on my belt using a carabiner. All I do is I wrap this up, place it underneath this strap here and it's ready to go when I need it next. Now there are a couple of convenience items that I want to talk to you about that I'd like to get. Convenience item number one is going to be a rod holder on this side. Why that side? Well, it's the opposite of where my fish locator is. I also want to add a cup holder, a Scotty cup holder that goes right here. It's a lot easier to use that than the cup holder that they provided with this kayak. I used to use that, but it's not really great with this backpack being here. It's not really great with this little dry storage being here. It'd be much easier keeping a water bottle in the vertical position right here using a Scotty mount or something similar. And then, what I'd like to do in the future is put a GoPro mount right here. The last and final item that I would like to get 
is actually a dry storage hatch in the front of the kayak and the back. If you purchase a dry storage hatch, either an 8 inch or a 6 inch, you can put that right here. You can put bug spray in there, extra GoPro batteries, all kinds of things you might think you need. A flashlight, who knows, sunscreen, there's a whole bunch of stuff you could store that would be really convenient to keep inside the hull of your kayak. At the same time, there's a space behind your crate that you can put the dry storage hatch here as well. You can put an eight inch one here, an eight inch one in the front. You can have a lot of extra storage inside your kayak if you put that there. Now that I shared with you things that would be convenient and nice for me to have, let me share with you things that I really should get probably sooner than later. Thing number one, I should replace this life jacket with a kayak life jacket. Those are much nicer to sit in, much more comfortable, the second thing I should add is a kayak paddle leash so that in case this goes off flying somewhere or floats away, I'm not stuck somewhere without any way of paddling around. I should also get a battery box for this little ice fishing battery. That's going to keep it dry, but it's also going to give me a way to attach the box to the crate or another access point of this kayak. If you want to learn more about how I set up this kayak originally before I put some of this stuff on it, it's a super practical and much more affordable way to set up your kayak. Click on this video right here. It's going to help you just to get started having a basic setup for your kayak, particularly with the Lifetime Teton Angler. And also, don't forget to subscribe by clicking this over here. It helps the channel grow. I'll see you next time.